All right. Um, very, very uh, frustrated, and, and um, you know our team is um, our team is um, you know experiencing, and, and our coaches and players we're experiencing a significant test right now. Um, trying to you know have the mental toughness to overcome some. Um, very, very difficult results over the last you know few weeks, and, and what we've got to do is find ways uh, to continue uh, evolving and, and changing our process to prepare to find the advantages we can to be at our best um, for these games. Having watched the tape, um, I do feel like even with some things that we could do a lot better, coach a lot better, uh, me personally, um, that it was right there for us, and uh, you know we we just need to find ways to get that to get it done, um, you know, in the end. I think we got the right people in this building. I think we got the right guys in that locker room. Um, I'm very, very confident uh, that we will push forward through, uh, you know, this test uh, collectively, individually, um, and, and really the best version of this team is out there. Uh, it's still out in front of us, and my job is to try to get us uh, to that point, um, and that's pushing everybody in this building to embrace this as the challenge that it is and uh, ultimately attack it. And, and we can you know, go through the tape today with the players. Um, what I'm asking for is you know, a personal and collective responsibility uh, for every single guy to, and coach uh, to look inward and, and where are those little things we can do better, where are the big things um, we can do better, and then uh, ultimately have those, res you know, those results start coming, coming um, via uh, how we're going about attacking this. But come Wednesday, my expectation is we'll have um, as much urgency and uh, you know, uh, positive energy going into having our best week of preparation yet. And uh, my belief is that the result will come with, uh, you know, with that. Um, but it's all about how we get there. It's, it's uh, very easy to get, um, you know, be in a situation where uh, we're on three. And there's going to be a lot of noise about what that means long term, but we've got to find a way to worry about the little things first and collectively build on those positive little things until it equals the result that we needed to equal uh, on Sunday. Uh, positives, I thought, you know, offensively with the running game and, and the explosives and kind of feeling a little bit more, at least um, outside of the red zone, um, how we want to feel as an offense. Uh, one of four in the red zone was definitely a huge reason why we lost the football game. There were some plays to be had there, um, and we just didn't make uh, you know a couple of those plays. And I got to have a couple better calls, especially um, you know on on some of those sequences where um, you know we could possibly you know either run the football in or um, find a way to to throw it in. Um, the turnover margin again. We lost the turnover battle there on the last one. We had a chance to maybe flip that number. Uh, that, that offense does not turn the football over a lot. I think their quarterback you know, does a really good job of that. He did give us an opportunity there late in the game um, when we had the lead. And uh, they go from you know, third and 17, two plays later, um, they're scoring a touchdown. Uh, you know, third and 17 from midfield. And, and then two plays later, you know, we're, we're trying to chase that lead again. Those are some of the things that I think, just as a group, all three phases, we need to continue to try to chase. Um, just giving you an injury update, uh, Bradbury, uh, our hope is that he can, you know, he had a, a very good work week last week and, and feels stronger and, and he's getting right there. We'll see how he goes through the week. Hopefully uh, we'll have him uh, this Sunday in Carolina. Um, we'll we'll kind of monitor Marcus Davenport as well, see what kind of work he can do early on in the week and how that looks for Sunday. And then uh, Byron Murphy did have a, a little bit of a hip contusion. Um, he'll be sore, but um, I'm hopefully expecting him to be able to work through that and then Josh Metellus with his shoulder, um, just ultimate toughness uh, to, to basically do what he did yesterday. Now we just got to continue to try to get him recovered and, and uh, so much respect for Josh and how he battles, uh, battles through it. But, um, but with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. Kevin, when it comes to the strange bounces that you've sort of seen this year, you mentioned the Caleb one. I guess when you're making adjustments and changes, how do you kind of separate what is random and strange and, and when you're against you and, and what needs to be adjusted. Yeah, it's all to me about, uh, you know, situational emphasis. It's all technique fundamentals. What was the call? What technique did you play? Was it the right technique? Uh, where were your eyes? Uh, the reaction? Um, all those things that we can coach, um, you know, just continuing to coach the smallest 
of details to make sure that those guys understand exactly how we need them to play in those moments uh, that when those opportunities do present themselves, we start making those plays. And, and I think it's uh, there's examples of it on our football team for, for a lot of guys to look towards um, of, of guys that play with great technique, fundamentals, urgency, um, understanding of what we're trying to get done. And, and those guys tend to um, you know, shine on Sundays. And that's where we got to get our whole roster to. Should Evans have had that interception, or was the degree of difficulty on that catch just too tough? Yeah, I think I think it was a tough play for sure. But I, I think you know Caleb would be the first one to say, you know, he could have made that play. Um, and then uh, ultimately, not only do we not catch it, but they do on the tip. Um, it's pretty, you know, pretty unique and, and, and quite a swing. You know, when you think about what uh, might have been in that situation, you know, with the lead and, and the way we were running it, a chance to finally have a lead in the fourth quarter and and really put a uh, put a stamp on what we did running the football. I, you know, I think there would have been some opportunities there uh, to, to maybe go on a long time, time consuming drive for points that, uh, you know, put us in a better position to win the game. Kevin, defensively, how do you kind of rec reconcile the you know, whiplash of what the Eagles did two weeks ago run, run wise and yep. what Chargers did yesterday pass wise? Um, how do you process like those two very different uh, ways that they were successful. Yeah, you know, I, I thought, uh, you know, uh, they, they, had, they had a good plan uh, to get the ball out uh, versus some of the pressure looks. You know, our tackling was pretty good on the perimeter with, the, you know, there were a lot of bubbles and kind of quick throws and, and not really trying to worry about blocking up uh, some of those pressure looks. And they got the ball out in space um, on a, a few, you know, a few scenarios there in the second half. Um, you know, we're close to maybe having an impact on the quarterback before he's able to push the ball down the field. And, and there's a enough plays like that versus a really, really good quarterback. And, um, you know, Keenan Allen obviously having a big day, um, you know, making some critical plays. That third and 17 kind of back across the field play was a, a little bit of a backbreaker because, you know, obviously what happened on the next play. But that was a chance, you know, for us to get off the field right there once again with the lead. And, and what does that look like? Um, Kevin, I just think we just every single week is going to be uh, by game plan how we want to approach defensively, um, putting you know deploying our our personnel, how we're going to play personnel wise, what groupings are going to be in the field or on the field, and, and ultimately uh, you know what Flo and his staff feel are the the best way to try to uh, attack the opposing offense. And, and as we put more on tape, we've got to be ready to adjust and and uh, be ready for you know the counter punches people are seeing based upon how we're building defensive plans early on in the season. And, and I think there's a evolution that will take place on both sides. And um, it's always going to come down, you know, defensively to those one or two or three plays that could really get you off the field and change the whole uh, landscape of the game. And, and I've got confidence in our guys to make those plays and, and, and the flow to get us in the right call. Um, and, uh, you know, that's something we'll continue to work towards. Along the lines of adjusting, you know, I think yesterday was – a uh, heavy, very heavy blitz day. Yep. Um, in retrospect, did that need to be adjusted during the game, or was that the best, you know, approach? Do you think? Well, I, I thought, uh, you know, I thought it, you know, it got us into some situations where we had some third down potential stop opportunities, um, you know, uh, and then how how they were able to, you know, stay manageable using the quick the quick elements and things, and then set up a explosive on the trick play. They. You know, they, they had a good plan, and, and, you know, we know those things are coming when, when you can kind of see the menu of the day early on. And that's where we got to continue to, you know, try to take away people's fastballs whenever we can, um, but react um, when, when that ball gets put in play uh, with the chance of being explosive. We got to react and make a play. Kevin, revisit the sequence at the end of the game yesterday. Mm -hmm. in, in that spot, does Kirk have the, the latitude, I guess, to just say, Communication is going haywire. I'm just going to bring everybody up and, and clock it rather than waiting for a call to come in. Or yeah, I, you know, I think so. I think the problem with, you know, that scenario was really, you know, he got bits and pieces of, of the call. Um, and, and by the time, uh, by the time we, you know, I, we, we felt like it was a good opportunity in the moment, knowing that if we were able to use our normal frequency and timing to get up and snap that ball off, we would then have four chances uh, to score um, from then on out using kind of that ozone mentality of we're throwing it in the end zone or out of bounds, um, you know, and, and, and in hindsight, uh, just with the momentum of that fourth down conversion, 
um, that that's that's purely on me. Uh, I should you know try to uh, just clock the ball and and understand that we'll take our three downs from there uh, to try to score. I've got a ton of confidence in our group. If we get three opportunities to throw it in, um, we're going to give ourselves good chances to do that. Um, you know, going back to some of the other red zone ops we had in the game, um, you know, had a pretty clean look for to Alexander on the third and five um, when we were in empty and uh, just. You know, execution. Bosa got a good rush off the right side and hit Kirk's arm. Otherwise, you know, that should be a walk-in touchdown right there. We should have had, you know, we had a decent chance on another run, you know, kind of on a, a pass can that we can do a run um, and uh, just end up getting tackled by the safety there right inside that one yard line and, and then go backwards when we put our goal line group out there, which is, should never be the case. Um, so it's just, it's a combination of execution in those situations. And then the end of, and the end of game scenario where we do convert even after the the uh, you know the penalty uh, you know when we were we you know without it, without timeouts and they you know they charge us that that penalty we go backwards and then find a way to convert um, you'd like to think that momentum there um, is is enough to you know not need to continue to press and that's where I think I was you know trying to keep whatever you know defense that Brandon was maybe going to get set there uh, with a huddle call. Um, I was trying to avoid that and see if we could get one. We ended up having kind of a single high look and, uh, you know, just, just didn't get the execution on that one. Um, and, and another one where not only do we not catch it, but the ball ends up going up in the air to the middle of the field and they've got some defenders there to pick it. Kevin, there's, uh, there's still some ball security issues yesterday. Yeah. Maybe not as bad, but... Um... No, I, you know, yeah. I not to cut you off. I, I that, you know, that was a huge emphasis, and 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 really that that first turnover of the day was when we got we were really churning out some yards, running the ball, um, about to enter the red zone, and and we convert on that third down, and the ball gets taken away, literally in a mirrored uh, setting to our you know C two split two kind of drill, um, and nobody's going to be harder on themselves about that one than TJ, but. The fact of the matter is the ball, you know, is still in, in a, a critical, critical turnover uh, where we defer, defense gets a stop, and we're driving down there for points, and we, you know, come away with nothing, and, and then the next time we go on the field, we're trailing. So, uh, you know, that, that one, uh, I thought there was some, you know, other times where forward progress and things, and there was a lot of discussion going on throughout the day, but uh, we need to end every snap with the football in our hands, and that's going to be continued at urgency and emphasis like it was last week, and we're going to continue to do it and do it differently and emphasize it different ways until that value is received because that is a losing formula, um, as we've seen, uh, being where we're at in the turnover differential right now. Yeah, you you say yes, can become contagious for a team like guys like no, I think that's something that we're going to we're going to fix one way or the other. Either guys are going to do it, or we're going to have to put other guys in the game that um, have ball security. Kevin, you said yesterday that. You were a part of a team that lost three games in a row, and you mm -hmm. guys went on to win a world championship. Yep. From your point of view on that team, what kickstarted you guys, and who do you think is going to be that guy or the group to kickstart this team? Yeah, um, I think back on the collective group. Uh, I think back on our leadership, uh, the guys on that team and in that locker room that uh, just continued to push push forward. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, doubt. There's going to be a lot of noise. There's going to be a lot, and rightly so. Um, I think we share I, I share the frustration of our fans. Uh, we have high expectations for ourselves as a football team, um, as did that team. And uh, what we've got to do is, uh, you know, when when the situation is as as tough as it is right now, we've got to lean in even more. We got to do a little bit more. Every coach, every player, uh, collectively and individually, has just got to do a little bit more. Um, you know, I told the team, whether you graded out 100 out of 100 yesterday on the, on the grade sheet or not, look at it from the lens of what can I do more of? What can I do better to help the guy to my right and the guy to my left? And then ultimately, uh, those small incremental gains uh, will mean something when that result does finally come. Um, and I think the process at which you go through that and work through that can be an incredible growth opportunity for this team and our organization. And I, like I said, I think we've got the guys to do it. Um, and my expectation is we will. But me standing up here talking about it, um, you know, certainly uh, is not going to do a whole heck of a lot about that. And our players talking about it, um, we've got to ignore the noise and push forward and, and do it in a way where with a purpose and a mentality that we're going to fix some of the issues that we've had that have contributed to us losing these games. 
and uh, find a way to continue doing some of the things we're doing well, do that better, and fix some of the problems that we have. And, and collectively, I think we're going to find the results are out there for us as a team. Kevin, as you reviewed some of the, the failed third downs kind of through the course of the game, what stood out to you just on tape? Yeah, and, and that's one of the things. You know, we only had 10 third downs against the Eagles. Uh, you know, we had, I think, with some of the penalty conversions that we had, either a hold on Justin or hands to the face on Justin in, you know, neutral zone uh, infraction by the defense. I think there was ended up being close to 19. Um, and with some of those penalties, uh, you know, we were 9 or 10 out of 19. If you count all those as did we get a new set of downs. Uh, but when I look at it, uh, there were some real missed opportunities. You know, uh, you know, that third and five in the red zone counts. Uh, with a chance for Alex screaming across there. Um, we had Justin on another one where, you know, the pocket kind of, we got beat on a TE and, and the pocket kind of collapsed. Uh, that's where, hey, what is my job on the play? Um, how, how detailed, um, how technique and fundamentally sound were we in performing our job? And what was the result? And how was it affected by um, wherever, uh, you know, the lapses in execution were? Um, and, and I think that was, you know, showed up a couple times where we could have maybe stayed on the field um, with some conversions, which would have been huge the way we were running the ball. Thanks, everyone. All good? Thank you. Thank you. Open locker room.